619. Now, prescription painkiller abuse continues to be a huge problem in this country. Since 1999, the number of people who have died from overdoses has quadrupled. And joining us this morning is Deborah Hurstman, president of the National Safety Council, with more on prescription drug abuse. Good morning, Deborah. Good morning. So let's talk about how this problem, how the abuse starts. Is it because those prescription painkillers are just so accessible? You know, there's more and more of these painkillers being prescribed, but they are very addicting. And mm -hmm. so if you look at the properties of these drugs, actually the foundation of them is the same as heroin. And so this chemical uh, composition has been shown to be very addictive and also have some deadly side effects as well. Yeah, and you mentioned heroin. Often these drugs can be a gateway drug for heroin, correct? That's right. Four out of five heroin users actually started their addiction with prescription opioids. And so these painkillers, um, because heroin actually has a cheaper street value, when they can't get those opioid painkillers anymore, they easily transition to heroin. So it's really important to make drugs and to make sure that people with um, potential addiction mm -hmm. um, markers, things like alcoholism in their family or even smoking, don't take these drugs because most of the users and abusers um, end up with a, a deadly habit and it can be very dangerous. Wow. Just so scary to hear. How do we manage this problem? How can we even begin to tackle it? Well, you know, it starts with making sure that consumers are educated about what they're taking. We did a survey recently, and only 29% of people said they were taking prescription opioids. But when we asked them about brand names like mm -hmm. Percocet, Oxycontin, Hydrocodone, they actually recognize those. So it's knowing what you're taking uh, is the first step. And then really talking to your doctor about what alternatives might be out there for pain relief things that don't have mm -hmm. these addicting properties and don't have the harmful side effects that the opioids do. Yeah, and then just really monitoring the situation. If you are prescribed that painkiller, how long do you take it for? Exactly how much and then how to, how to eventually get off of them? Absolutely, and the shortest duration possible as far as the pain relief from these opioids is, opioids is really the best path forward. Mm -hmm. And so when you're talking with your doctor, making sure that you know if you only need them for a few days, don't get a prescription for a few weeks. Right. Yeah. Can you talk at all about the problem specific to Texas? Absolutely. 625 people were lost in 2013 to overdoses due to these opioid painkillers. But I was actually just in Austin earlier this spring, and I have to say congratulations to Texas because some really good things have been done. And while these numbers are on the rise across the nation, Texas has actually seen a reduction in the last five years by about 20% of deaths due to overdoses. This um, month, they just signed, um, the governor signed a bill making naloxone accessible to first responders and family members. This is really important because naloxone is like an EpiPen for opioid overdoses. And so that allows people to get quick recovery while the emergency responders are on the way. All right, well, just a little bit of good news there, but so much work to be done. Deborah Hurstman, thank you so much for joining us this morning.